Use magic erasers and electric shave. And you too can look like me! Gotcha! I told you that this club is nine months younger than this club. Today I'm going to show you how to set your gear back to factory settings. Okay, so before we get started, I have to start with a massive disclaimer. This method can take off the first hydrophobic protective layer of colored Bauer gear. Why do I say colored specifically? Because I've used this method hundreds of times on my white Bauer gear that just has like gray print on graphics, and it's been completely fine. Now, I can't speak to any other brands, and I haven't heard about this being a problem with anybody else, so it could just be colored Bauer gear specifically. So, just keep that in mind. Try this method out on a small piece of the material, just to make sure you're not going to hurt it before you do the whole thing. So without further ado, this method uses something called electric shave, which is a pre-shave that you can get right at Walmart. And we'll also be using magic erasers. Now I use knockoff ones in this video, but it doesn't really matter, they all seem to work the same. I also used a combination of q-tips, water, and a towel. Also keep in mind if you're going to use a towel when you're cleaning colored gear, the dye can come off on the towel, and from my experience it hasn't come out yet, so I have a blue towel. So I was cleaning a colored set, which meant that I had to use as little electric shave as possible because that way you can have the least amount of breakdown of that surface layer. I find it works best to apply the electric shave to the magic eraser and only about as much as you can get while having just a little bit of a glossy sheen on whatever you're cleaning. You don't want it to be soaked and you certainly don't want it to stay there either. That's why I keep the towel around because you want to be able to wipe the electric shave off of the pad after you clean it because you don't want it to sit on the pad and break it down as it dries. What you just saw there is the biggest issue with cleaning this kind of gear. It's infuriating, you have to have a lot of patience to do it. This probably took me five hours to do the whole set and it is the bleeding. If you just barely touch any of the bloom, that part of the magic eraser can no longer be used for anything except for the blue because if you try to put it on the white it will transfer that blue onto the white like a sharpie if you do happen to get blue on it and you're still working on the white all you have to do is rip off the surface of the magic eraser where it's blue and underneath will be white and then you can continue to use it for the white parts coming up next is a lesson learned the hard way so i thought that i could get these puck marks off of the white by using a cotton swab so i didn't touch the blue because at this point i thought that all of the blue was going to smudge but apparently the big parts of the gear that are blue are a different type of material, so they don't actually lean, but that means that the white graphics that are on these blue spots are the thing that are pasted on. Well, that's not good. <laughs> Where's the blue coming from? I think it's coming from underneath. I think the white is pasted on top of the blue. Yeah. Fine. Look, I can't take off the pop marks without uh, going down to the blue underneath a little bit. Eventually I found out that if you use less electric shave and more water, if you use like hardly any pressure and you just do it for a very long time, it will eventually take off the puck mark, at least pretty much, without damaging the white graphic or without damaging the surface of your gear either. As long as you're patient and you're gentle, you won't take off any of the surface layer. Up next is the hardest thing about cleaning gear, and that is getting the puck marks in and amongst the colored lettering. Now initially I went with the Q-tip because I figured it would be a lot more specific, but still easy to control because it's like a pencil almost. But what ended up happening is that was too invasive, too harsh, and you can see I'm pressing quite hard in this. So it just ended up taking off that surface layer, and it wasn't super effective at getting the puck marks off either, because it can't absorb that much. So instead I went to taking small pieces of magic eraser and just going over it very lightly over and over and over and over and over again. This works incredibly effectively if you only have the patience for it. You can see on the A to the right that I wasn't patient with it, I was getting frustrated with it, I've been working on it and trying to figure this out for like an hour at this point. This is also why it's so important not not to touch the lettering with the magic eraser because when you smudge a graphic it's annoying but this will completely remove the color from the lettering if you touch it too much. So if you're going to bother going between all the letters, learn from my mistakes and go nice and easy, slow and steady with the magic eraser. Now let's talk about what to do if you do end up accidentally breaking through that first layer of Bauer skin. It's very important that you understand that you cannot just leave it there. It's sort of like if you got a hole in the leather seat of your car, you can't just leave it there. You have to cover it up or fix it in some way because if you don't, every time you rub against it or something hits it, it's going to break down or it's going to strip off more. It's going to peel the skin off of the other parts as well. 
However, unlike a hole in a leather seat, the way to fix this problem is to use the very thing that caused it in the first place. So what the electric shave does is it basically takes it from like a solid form to a sort of soft and flexible form, which makes it easy to tear, but it also makes it so you can sort of transform it back into the solid form. So if you have a border that's torn, you can actually go over that border very, very, very gently with the electric shave parallel to the direction of the tear and that will actually smooth out the sides so that we don't have something for something to fetch on to tear more of the skin off. As sort of a sidebar, I am very well aware that using magic erasers on ghoulie gear is a very, very hot topic. People say that it's like fine sandpaper, which it absolutely is, and it absolutely can mess up your gear if you're not careful. However, I think the misconception comes from people thinking that it's the magic eraser's fault and not the other thing that you're using. So when I used that crap ton of electric shave, I could rub the skin off with my finger. I could rub it off with the towel, I could rub it off with anything because there was so much electric shave on it that it had turned it to goo and it was just incredibly fragile. Meanwhile, if I used a little tiny bit of electric shave and a magic eraser, I had no problems at all. That being said, I am a little bit of a ghoulie gear cleaning nerd. Like, I do this a lot and I'm really experienced with it, so if you're not experienced with it, I wouldn't recommend using this as your first attempt at cleaning your gear. This is, to my knowledge, the most invasive but also the most effective way to clean puck marks off of gear, so at the very least, try out on a small piece of gear first and make sure you know what you're doing before you do it. I typically only use this kind of like puck mark intervention when I really need it, like this of gear is completely new to me but had been used by a Bantam AAA goalie for a couple of years without ever being cleaned, so it had like layers of pockmarks. You saw the before and after, they really needed it. And also when there's so many pockmarks, it can get to a point where it protects the gear from the electric shade because there's so much on the surface already. Now keep in mind, if this technique seems a little bit too risky for you, there are a couple of other products you can use. There's Goo Gone and Puck Out. I just can't really speak to their effectiveness because I haven't used them before. And that being said, I would have tried these if they were a little bit less expensive. This is my killer super expensive recording setup. What? You think it makes me look poor? You would be correct. If you would like to find out how you can make me slightly less poor, I've got just the thing for you. So for those of you who are unaware, I'm going to be playing for the Sioux College Cougars this season in Sioux St. Marie, Ontario. So I designed this mask for me to wear while I'm there. However, even just vinyl wraps are really expensive and I'm super proud of this design, but I also have to not starve, so I am taking on regular art commissions as well as hockey mask designing commissions. If you want to allow me to buy this mask guilt-free, you can donate to my Buy Me A Coffee page and the funds from that only go to hockey-related things. The link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next one.